Avengers, it's Age of Ultron. He's garbage, folks. Is it an alligator or a crocodile? I don't know the difference, and at this point I'm too afraid to ask. Look at that. That is a werewolf. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Marvel Standom. I'm not your host, Mike Cicchini. I'm Kirsten Howard, the News and Features Editor at Den of Geek. Joining me on today's mysterious episode is our brilliant TV editor, Alec Bajalid, my metaphorical son, Joe George, and the reigning Standom Supreme, Brynna Ahrens. Welcome back. Uh, last week, we had to postpone our scheduled Marvel crossovers episode due to unforeseen circumstances. And yeah, it happened again. Uh, Mike couldn't join us today and he's got a lot to say on that subject. So we've moved it to a later date. So what are we doing here? I'm not entirely sure, but I think that first we're going to talk about that trailer for the Marvels because we haven't had a chance to chat about that. Uh, then afterwards, producer Andrew has put together a game, which will be explained later, apparently. Um, getting to that trailer, I think I'll start with Alec. Do you know why? Because he has been a perhaps low-key Captain Marvel enthusiast in the past. And I'd like to hear his thoughts. What do you think of it, Alec? Um, I'm glad you described me as a Captain Marvel enthusiast, because I think I'm one of like the seven Captain Marvel defenders on in the world. Um, I thought the, the the Captain Marvel movie was mostly fine. And I just really love the character because I love Brie Larson. And I love that the character of Captain Marvel is just so hilariously overpowered. She's like a Super Saiyan or like a Viltramite from Invincible. I loved this trailer, obviously, because I love Captain Marvel and I love most Marvel trailers. If how much I loved the Thor Love and Thunder trailer is any indication, this movie is going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I really thought it was a fun trailer. Um, I was shocked, not shocked. I was, I knew it was coming, but I was uh, maybe a little bit surprised by how Miss Marvel um, Kamala Khan focused it was just because I think it speaks to a level of confidence that Marvel has in that actress, in that character which is warranted, but also at the same time, I feel like they really did not anticipate as few people watching the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series as they did. I think, think folks are going to be fairly confused and we're spending so much time with the cons in this movie. I mean, like, I, I, I enjoyed it. It's a fun, clever little trailer, and I'm excited to see the movie. Joe, I haven't had any of your thoughts on this, even in private, so I'm fascinated. What did you think? No, I'm I'm kind of with Alec here where I'm really it looks like a lot of fun. I mean, I and I do wonder, I think Flora Love and Thunder is a good touch point here because I do wonder how much of the trailer is effective because it's using a good song and particularly a song that is cinematic in its uh in its sampling. So it it just it's almost cheating. I wonder if you can almost put anything on there and I would still be excited for it. All of that said, I am so excited to see more of Ms. Marvel. Just, I, 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 again, I, I agree that it's exciting that they're pushing her so hard. I, I think Marvel needs good vibes right now if they want to turn things around uh, over the last couple of months, the way things are going. And I think that's a great way to go. So I, I smiled all the way through. I'm excited. Uh, and I want to see, I'm just happy to have more Kamala back. I mean, I'm happy to for other characters too, but especially Kamala. Brenna? No, I am definitely one of the seven Captain Marvel defenders. I saw it like three times in the theaters. I've probably seen it at least like 10 times total. I'm probably one of the few people that has it like in my top five Marvel movies, like consistently. Um, so I am super excited for this movie. The trailer had me like smiling the whole time. I've probably seen the trailer at least 10 times by now, just because it makes me like so happy every time I see it. Like I'm literally Kamala, like the joy I just like have in my body, just seeing these characters again. Um, yeah, 
I'm just I'm just really excited for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm also a Captain Marvel defender. I really enjoyed that movie. I've seen it a bunch. My daughters are both really hyped for this one, um, as am I. Um, I think the problem that people are there are there are problems that people are focusing on that don't exist let's be clear um but there there was an issue here in that the first captain marvel movie perhaps made as much money as it did because it was teased as being sort of the connective tissue between uh, infinity war and endgame and i think people were really worried about missing out on some essential part of the story with this one it feels like there's the lead-in is based on the characters. So it'll be fascinating to see whether um, this ends up being even more of a gamble than the first one, really, and whether that will pay off. I don't know whether I'd put it in my top five, but it's definitely in my top ten. So, yeah. I mean, why not? People um, are wrong when they say Captain Marvel is a bad movie. That's all I'm saying. I mean... Are we yes. weird? <laughs> like, like yes. just, Marvel fandom has just the most off the wall Marvel <laughs> opinions. As a <laughs> I think we're weird. I know, along with the weekly Eternals. Um, no, that's just <laughs> you, weird. The rest of us are are all in line with everybody else that Eternals is bad. And I do we want to point out that Alex said that he's a great defender of Captain Marvel, and then said it's mostly fine. I mean, I don't think we're. <laughs> I want to make clear that I like the character more than the movie, <laughs> okay. but I also like the movie just fine. It's fine. I mean, well, there's no way that this is going to make as much money as the last Captain Marvel. No. That's true of all Marvel movies right now. And that'd be silly to hang that on there if people are expecting that. Captain Can Marvel I... is like the, the, the strangest billion dollar movie of all time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although the Avatar movie is perhaps giving it a run for the, its money. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> we'll see. But these, uh, the movies they've got this year, Ant-Man 3, <laughs> Guardians 3, <laughs> uh, Captain Marvel 2, they do feel that, like they might be aimed at a younger audience. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think yeah. a lot of old grumpy people are going to be excited to see it fail. Um, I, I hope that uh, Marvel's is directed at a younger audience. I mean, it's yes. is, is Kamala the first phase four introduced character to like return? I, I, I think she is. And I think that's smart that they're starting to bring in these these newer characters that that resonate with people. I mean, I think one of the big mistakes that Marvel's done is we don't what, what's Shang-Chi up to that people love that character. And this he's just been hand, hiding in the background. I mean, even right away in phase one, as soon as they realized that that you know, Thor and Loki and and, and and Tony Stark were popping, they started sticking him, them in everything. That's why you get that weird thing at the end of Incredible Hulk where Tony Stark shows up in a bar all of a sudden. You know, they need to be doing that again with now the new characters that they have. I, I don't understand why they're not pushing Kamala more or Shang-Chi or why Wong isn't in front of everything for that uh, that same point. I think I think they might be torn because they have half the audience saying, you know, not everything has to be connected. These things should be standalone so it's more accessible to new audiences or just casual audiences. And they have the other fan, the other half, which are like the diehard fans saying, you know, we want to see more of these characters we love. Uh, so they must it must be tricky uh, especially I mean we we say we like werewolf by night and stuff like that which doesn't feel connected to anything and, and we praise it for that but then we're like well where's Shang-Chi you know? <laughs> <laughs> people right say they don't want things connected but they do that's they want it, everything to be like phase three was where it was clearly building up to end game and infinity war and they think that there's a problem when it's not doing that. So no, they all need that's Marvel just needs to own that. That's what it is now. And stop pretending that it's anything else. It's sickness has made me cranky. I'm going to drink my tea. <laughs> you heard it here first. Joe has solved the MCU. I have. Um... Well, call me Kevin. <laughs> you know what Joe is asking for is not a lot because like <laughs> absolutely right. Like, I mean, it would take half a day to film, you know, Shang-Chi just popping by a bar. 
a different Marvel character <laughs> should appear in a different bar every single time. <laughs> look at phase four and five. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, w- I would love to see, like, you know, how Wong um, did karaoke with uh, Shang-Chi and Katie at the end of that movie. Like, the new recruitment model for this saga should just be um, an in credit scene where they just get, like, progressively more and more people to do karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You can't tell me that wouldn't fix everything. <laughs> I we genuinely think it might. I think it like, I literally <laughs> think that like Marvel does just like shift its entire fate on a dime if we just <laughs> karaoke. Yeah. It used to be like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 where there's like five post credit scenes and we just catch up with everyone. The little mini yeah. episodes. Yeah. They don't do those one shots anymore. I think that's the problem. More one shots. More one shots. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow. Real, real, real quick, Chris, we, um, somebody oh. just has to say the words Flurkin Army so we can move on. Yes. There's an army of Flurkins. <laughs> the most exciting shot in that trailer was <laughs> nothing superhero related, none of the uh, wonders of the cosmos. It was in just a gaggle of cats running down the stairs. And my kid just screamed like, Goose! <laughs> like that, that's the star of this movie goose is the star and if they if they accept that and they lean into that <laughs> we've got ourselves another billion dollar baby here that's what i think okay now it's time to play this game that andrew has created for us and he is going to fill us in on how it will all work this is the first time our audience is hearing our producer's voice he's very much been the man behind the curtain for a long time So here we go. Andrew? So today we are going to play a game based on the Mandela effect. You may have heard about the effect before. It's the phenomenon of multiple people false remembering the same thing. We may have seen something thousands of times and yet cannot recall a key detail. One of the most famous examples is the spelling of the Berenstain Bears. Is it S-T-A-I-N or S-T-E-I-N? The answer is A-I-N. Or a more nerdy example, what is the famous line? Luke, I am your father. Or no, I am your father. No, I am your father. So this goes back to when a paranormal researcher, Fiona Broom, I've done research, Uh, reported having memories of Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s. However, he actually died in 2013. What's interesting is that so many people online backed up Broom's claim, all experiencing the same false memory. So what I've done here is I've taken a Marvel-related image, and I've made duplicates, but with some slight alterations. And our contestants here will have to guess which one is the original. And this is obviously a very visual heavy game, so you'll have to make sure to check this out live or check out the VOD on youtube.com slash denofgeekus to play along. And this is how the scoring system is going to work. Each contestant is going to begin with five points, and they will share one at a time the option they have chosen as well as their confidence level on a scale of one through five. One being the least confident, five being very confident you will be wagering these points. If you guess correctly, you will gain the amount of points that you wagered. And if you guess incorrectly, you will lose the amount that you wagered. There's five rounds and I wish you all the best of luck. Andrew, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, What happens if somebody makes an ill-fated bet and goes down to zero? Are they out (laughs) of the game or can we go and continue to bet and go into like negative numbers? You can go in the negative numbers. Ooh. Yeah. All right. And now I have another question, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Would you like me to describe the picture for our podcast audience? Sure you can. That would be great. Would that I be- love, we love our podcast listeners. We, we love do. them so much. They're but I best. do highly recommend you all go to youtube.com slash den of geek us to check out <laughs> the video. <laughs> Andrew you works so hard on these images. And while you're there, press subscribe and then hop over to Twitch and press subscribe and etc. Et check out all of our articles on denofgeek.com slash Marvel. <laughs> all right. So here we go. We're going to start with a practice round, round zero. It is not Marvel related. This is just a proof of concept so you can get your feet wet. This is the practice round. Which of these three characters is the original? 
You don't need to do confidence for this one because okay. I'll just give you all your points right back. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to describe this for the yeah. audience. This is a character in the UK who is called Where's Wally. In what? the US, he is called Where's Waldo. And if you remember, he's got the red and white stripy top and the, the blue slacks and a wee bobble hat. All right, Kirsty, what is your answer? I'm going to say B. B. I'm Alec, not- what is your answer? <laughs> um, I'm going to say A. And just to describe the image further, B, he has a cane and C, he has an umbrella. But I don't think he has any accessories. So I'm going with A. Joe, what is your answer? I believe he's a well accessorized man. So I'm on with B. <laughs> And Brenna? I also don't think he has any accessories, so I'm going to go with A. Well, the answer is B. That's right. He does have a walking stick. Wally betrayed us. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, we're going to absolutely smash this. Well, as long as you get the names right and don't pull any of this weird UK stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Marvel is certainly one of the most recognizable brands out there. Its iconic red background and white lettering has been widely used since the 1960s, with only slight alterations being made, the latest being in 2012. The Marvel Studios logo uses the design and is featured above every MCU title. Which brings us to our very first round, the Marvel logo. my goodness. Come on, man. (laughs) This is just, this is a kerning question. <laughs> okay, Entire yeah. game based off kerning. You know what? I'm for confident. All, I'm going with it right now. For audience, I would describe there are three almost identical looking Marvel logos, and we have to guess which one it is. Um, the first image, all the letters are separated. I believe the second one, the R and the V, are touching. And uh, the third one, all the letters are touching. I'm going to be in the negatives real quick, it feels like. <laughs> all right, Kirsty, would you like to go first? I'm not confident, uh, so I'm going to just bet one point. I think it is C. Okay, and Joe? I'm very confident that it is C, so I bet five points. Oh, now I wish I'd bet five points. I skipped Alec there. Sorry, Alec. How many would you like to wager, and what's your guess? Well, I wish I could change it, but I already texted you it. That's right. Hey, <laughs> see that? <laughs> I would absolutely change my answer at this point because C is looking pretty, pretty appealing now. But I, I went with A because I'm an idiot. And you wagered two points. I wagered two points. And Brenna. I also um, wish I could change mine, but um, I chose A and wagered two points. <laughs> but now I'm not so sure. All right, everybody. The answer is... Bam, the answer is C. Yay! <laughs> First, if you recall, I proposed that we make this a team game with you and Jennifer's. <laughs> me and Brenna, and we would be getting absolutely smoked right now. I can't believe I shot that idea down. That was foolish. (laughs) Uh, Could have embarrassed those TV punks for good. Why did you do that? (laughs) The poster boy of the X-Men first appeared in The Incredible Hulk number 180 and has steadily become perhaps the most iconic X-Men character to date. James Logan Howlett features prominent claws covered in adamantium, as well as superhuman regenerative abilities. The character, as portrayed by Hugh Jackman, will return for Deadpool 3, where he will reportedly sport the iconic classic costume. Which brings us to Wolverine. I will describe it for the audience. There are three images of Wolverine. In the first image, A, he uh, is wearing a yellow and blue costume with black details. Uh, In B, he's wearing the same sort of costume, really, but one of his arms is bare, from what I can tell. Um, In in C, he is wearing a black and yellow costume with a bare arm. Uh, Bare left, left arm? 
not good with left and right. Um, hopefully that gives you a very vivid picture of what we're looking at here. I'm going to play the mental intimidation game and point out that he is James Howlett the third when referred to his <laughs> birth name, not simply James Howlett. That's his grandfather. Well, not biological grandfather. But. Were these questions deliberately designed so that Joe could win? <laughs> Yeah, what is going on? I'm like, <laughs> I have COVID. Feel bad for me. <laughs> all right, Kirsty, what do you got? I'm not confident at all. I'm going to go one again. Uh, I'm going to choose B. All right, let's go with Alec. I'm going to go with B, and I'm betting all my points because it's going to be <laughs> the only way that I have a prayer of catching up to Joe. Because you can knows. bet up to five points. Oh, every time. Oh, I didn't know that. So I, I, if I get it wrong, I'm at negatives already. Is everybody okay with this? Is anybody? <laughs> Can I uh, change this to five, please, Andrew? We'll let it slide this time. You want to bet five? I'd like to bet five. Okay. You just go for it, Alec. You know, we weave our own tapestry in this life. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> and Joe? Hi, uh, it is B. Uh, I am wagering five, but I would like to point out that he did wear a costume similar to C at the end of the Mirror Island saga. God. So come on. Oh my God. <laughs> and Brenna. Um, I am also guessing B. Um, I wasn't very confident though, so only one point for me. You're all correct. Oof. This is intense. How many of these are there? Because I'm going to start betting big if... Uh... There's five, right? There's oh, five rounds. Five? How many have we done? Two? Two. Yeah. And I also, I was not aware of the you can bet five each time rule. That's an important wrinkle. So, like, Joe just can't double up every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I don't see the problem with this. <laughs> it's literally exponential. He's going to have, like, 170,000 points every time. <laughs> Captain America, the leader of the Avengers, has finally retired after many years of adventures. Well, at least Steve Rogers. Because as we now know, Captain America is a title that can be passed on. Sam Wilson is the new Captain America with a new suit based on his previous title, Falcon. While not a super soldier himself, Sam does possess a very key and iconic tool passed down from his predecessor. Which brings us to round three. Captain America's shield. Uh, so is this, this is Sam Wilson's shield? Can I just clarify that? It's the, it is Steve Rogers' shield that he then passed down. Okay. Yeah, the shield is the shield. I think, I don't know. Why am I speaking with confidence? I obviously, <laughs> I obviously know nothing. <laughs> Are these other shields in Marvel that you found, Andrew, or? I photoshopped all three of these oh, okay. shields. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> the effort that's gone into this. Ooh. Oh, to describe this for our listeners, uh, it's three shields. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kirsty, how much have you wagered and what's your answer? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, the thing is, uh, okay, five, I guess, because, you know, we're almost, well, we're over halfway now. I'm gonna go with, this is tough. I feel like it, I know it's A or C. I'm gonna go with A. <laughs> Wagering five? Yeah, I guess. I mean, why not? <laughs> so confident. Sorry. All right, uh, Alec. I went on the exact same journey and came to the other conclusion. <laughs> C5. <laughs> it probably is C. Joe? I, I went C5 as well. Okay, so it's Sunk C. The okay, I, I love getting to find out what it is. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Brenna. This is the first one I've been confident about, so I am putting five points on C. We know what the answer is. It's C. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
<laughs> right after we talked Kirsten into doing <laughs> that in time. <laughs> I'm at the roulette wheel, like with uh, my hands shaking, and you guys are like, bet it all on black. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I point out. If we were teams, we'd be tied. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, oh. I've clearly made a, several huge mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers headquarters has changed over the years, sometimes being destroyed and then rebuilt. The current headquarters, or at least the facility that was featured in Avengers Endgame, is in upstate New York. But prior to that, the Avengers resided in a modified Stark Tower in midtown Manhattan. The iconic tower is recognized by a unique design and a capital A prominently featured. Can you identify the original Avengers Tower? Great stuff. Wow. Oh, okay. For the podcast audience, A is the Stark, uh, a section of Stark's tower with the A and it's silver. In B, uh, the A is red. And in C, the A is like a turquoise, I want to say. Teal, I want to say, yeah. Teal, turquoise, yeah. Or blue, if you like. I I feel confident about this one, but that makes me pretty certain I'm wrong. Gosh, this is tricky, isn't it? It is. <clears throat> now you know how we feel, Joe. What? <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty, I'm coming to you first. Well, my instinct is A, but I'm going to put two on B because can't go wrong twice. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Alec? I feel weirdly confident that it's B, and I'm going to go B5 um, wow. with right. the full expectation that I'm going to be wrong. It was going with B up until I just, I can't get over the arrow in the the A. And it's only in C, and that's the, the the comic book logo has the arrow in it. So I don't remember it being teal or blue like that, but I had to go with the arrow, so I went C three. And Brenna, um, I was torn between A and B, so I decided to just go all in on A. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it is A, you know, Brenna. Well, the answer is C. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> He's getting it right on accident now, Andrew. <laughs> I, ha I had a logic to it. It wasn't <laughs> just accident. I just don't see Tony Stark as a guy who would have teal on. <laughs> like that shade of teal. But. Yeah, the color feels off. And there's one question left, so I hope I can make it to minus five by the end of this game. I don't I'm think sure that we all, I don't, I don't think all our scores collectively. <laughs> <laughs> Returning for a second season on Disney Plus, Marvel Studios' Loki expanded the Marvel Universe with variants, timelines, He Who Remains, and the TVA. The face of which is an upbeat virtual AI clock with a southern accent voiced by Tara Strong. The character has a strong on-screen presence and always seems to know more than she's letting on. She's the only character at the TVA who truly knows what's actually going on, even appearing at the Citadel at the end of time. Designed like a classic Disney cartoon, can you identify the iconic Miss Minutes? Oh, great, Scott. Wow. Okay, for the podcast audience, Miss Minutes, uh, there are four choices here actually. In A, Miss Minutes is, I honestly can't tell the difference. Yeah, these are identical. <laughs> like, okay, like, no. What are, the, what are the, okay. So in the first one, Miss Minutes has white gloves and her 12, 3, 6, nine parts of bold in the second one she doesn't have white gloves but otherwise i think it's the same um in the third one she has white gloves but those bold parts are missing and in the fourth one i'm honestly stumped 
what well, I don't know. <laughs> I can't there see. are I there are. I think I see what's going on here, but I'm well, not going to help you guys out. All right. The A has more hash marks around her face than, uh-huh. or D has fewer hash marks than the rest. It's okay. What hash marks? The the I don't know how to. Right. I don't know how to tell time with analog. <laughs> Whatever the the is it? Am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. They have two in between instead of three, right? All right, Kirsty, do you have your answer? I'm 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 putting it all on D, Andrew. All on D. Hot D. Alec. All on D or hot D, as apparently we're calling it for some reason. <laughs> Joe? I went all on mildly warm A. Wow. All in, huh? Mm-hmm. And Brenna. I went two on A. All right, everybody. Well, the answer was A. Oh! Oh, wow. Oh. See that, commenters? I know my Marvel. Congratulations, Joe. You're going to get this little crown can i wear it if I, oops, wrong I can just can I, I will put it no. i will i will bestow it upon your head i like this game we can do this every week <laughs> <laughs> you know in previous episodes many previous episodes of marvel stand i talk about how i've got a terrible memory <laughs> it's not i'm not joking with you guys and i think tonight really proved it well that you joe you earned it um well, thank you Congratulations. I'll just have to think, figure out a way to punish you for this in some <laughs> I way. I just want to make you proud, Mom. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> no, I'm still going to punish you. Okay. Okay. Very mum. Right. <laughs> well, that's it for this special episode of Marvel's Dungeon. Uh, make sure you're subscribing to us wherever you are right now. We're Den of Geek TV on Twitch and Den of Geek US on YouTube. Don't forget to check out our web home of denofgeek.com where you can find all our Marvel coverage. Drop us a line. Let us know your burning questions and what you want us to cover in upcoming episodes. We're Marvel Standom on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you all for watching, listening, following, and subscribing. This has been Marvel Standom on the Den of Geek Network. Until next time, please be good to each other and stay safe. <laughs>